Solving inverse problems is a whole separate field. So knowing whether an inverse exists and finding it can be really important for us. But when do we have an inverse? Well, this is why we bothered about the concepts of 1 to 1 and 1 to 2. Till in this video will tell you a criterion for invertibility. A transformation that is both 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 is invertible. And only those transformations is are invertible. Let's see why this is. Well, it reminds us of the invertible matrix theorem. Invertible matrix theorem said that the square matrix and the inverse matrix A is invertible even though only if A has n pivots. And we know that transformations T from Rn to Rn, T of x equals Ax, uh, they were uh, invertible if, uh, sorry, they were 1 to 1 and 1 to 2 if and only if the matrix A has n pivots. So we have seen that before. So here we see this equivalence already arising that your transformation uh, is invertible if and only if uh, your transformation is 1 to 1 and 1 to 2. Now let's see that in a more general setting. We have t from v to w, linear. Uh, then we have that t is invertible and t inverse is a linear transformation if and only if t is 1 to 1 and 1 to 2. We'll sketch the proof. First from left to right, first to on to part. So uh, why is if uh, uh, t is invertible and t inverse is linear, why, is, uh, why do you necessarily have that your transformation t is on to and one to one? First on to. Well, pick some uh, w into your codomain and then we have to show that a point v in the domain exists such that the t of v a equals this w. Well, how do we find this v? We use the inverse because we know the inverse exists, that's an assumption. So we pick v equals t inverse of w, and then we know that t of v, take the t here and there, t of v equals the t of t inverse of w equals w, those cancel out, that's what an inverse does. So then you know that your v, uh, the t of your v equals w, so you can reach any w in your codomain so your t is onto. It's basically given by your inverse. So look, uh, you have your w, your st you look for a v in your uh, domain, so you apply your t inverse to find it. And there you are. You can do that for any w, uh, so you can reach any w in your codomain. Now the one-to-one -one part, why well can do that in only one way? Well for that, uh, we look at the kernel. Suppose your v is in the kernel of t, we have to show that our kernel is trivial. We have to show that this v is the... Uh, 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 so, you, uh, so your whole kernel consists of only the zero vector. If your v is in the kernel of t, then the uh, t of v is zero by definition. Now, uh, if you uh, apply the uh, inverse, then you know the v equals t inverse of t of v, because the t inverse and the t cancel out, so here it basically says v equals v. Well, t of v equals 0, uh, because v is in the kernel of t. Uh, and now you use the fact that you have this t inverse. t inverse of 0, t is linear, so this is again the 0 vector. So if v is in the kernel of t, the only option you have is that v has to be the 0 vector. Because what's happening, you start with the v is mapped to 0, so now you are at the zero vector. Uh, you use the inverse, you, you go back to your domain, and the only possibility is uh, that you came from zero because the t inverse of zero, because your t inverse is also linear by assumption, so your t inverse of zero equals zero. You cannot start at a different point, v, go to zero, because if you come back, you have to go to zero. So that gives you that the kernel of t is only consisting of the zero vector, and that's the theorem we saw earlier. If the kernel of t is, on, is trivial, then t is 1 to 1. Now the other, wi other way, well, that's actually the, the, the important way for us. We'll only give it a sketch of the argument. Uh, so if your transformation t is on to 1, 1 to 1, uh, you know your t is invertible. We'll construct the inverse as follows. Uh, t is on 2, so you can pick any uh, w in your codomain. And then you know that there's a v such as w equals t of v. Moreover, your t is also one-to-one. -one. 
So you know that this V is unique. So you start here with a W, and you know there's exactly one V which came uh, such that V equals T, uh, such that your uh, W equals T of V. And now you can go the other way around uh, by setting, well, then we have an inverse if we go from the codomain back, uh, inverse from W to V, uh, where we set T prime of W equals this unique V. Uh, you can do this for any W you have in your codomain. So this is your inverse transformation. Well, this is just a sketch of the proof. You also have to show linearity and make this a bit more precise. But this is, uh, this is anyway the idea. So now you know uh, when is your transformation invertible. Well, if and only if. The transformation is both linear, uh, both one-to-one uh, -one and onto.